Absolutely. Uh, a lot of great weapons. Obviously, their, their guys are back. Keenan Allen and Mike Evans. I mean, Mike Williams is playing really well. Um, but uh, Palmer has been the guy who stepped up since they've been gone, really made a lot of plays. And even the return man, DeAndre Carter, who's get, got in there, he's got some, he got some yardage out there as well. And obviously, Austin Eckler, who's a really good safety guy, got over 90 catches there running back. Um, but obviously, everything's going to start with the quarterback, a guy who's literally has probably the best arm in the league. It, I would say I think he has the best arm in the league, but I mean, it's, it's relative to him, Josh Allen, or whatever. But he can make the throw from anywhere across the field. He can roll over to one side and throw the ball 80 yards down the field. Uh, elite arm talent. So, a uh, big challenge for us to go out there, you know, going on the West and try to get a big W. Yeah, how fun are these games? You know, two teams trying to, you know, you guys are trying to solidify your playoff positioning, they're trying to get in. How, how fun are these type of games this time of year? Yeah, I mean, all games are fun, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just going up against an explosive offense, you know, in LA should be a good, you know, good vibes out there. Uh, I think, you know, obviously the game we had last year was really exciting. So hopefully to go out there and try to recreate some of that magic that we did last time we was playing in LA. Obviously things haven't gone great for you guys the last few weeks, but you know, the fact remains you guys are still, you know, right there to win your division for a third straight year. How much has that been emphasized this week? Yeah, we had to handle our business on our end. We can't worry about, you know, what the standards look like or anything like that. We had to go out there and find ways to get W's. Uh, that's the bottom line. We can find a way to string together some wins. Uh, we'll win our division, and uh, we'll have we'll we'll still be able to accomplish everything we want to accomplish this season. Kevin, how tough is it as you're preparing for the game week? You look around, and, and it's like you know, Coach said Nico might be limited today, and, and start working his way back. Zach opens his window to practice. Do you look around and start counting? Okay, maybe somebody's coming back, or you just focus on your task at hand. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do that because it's feel like it's been like that all season. It's like somebody's returning to play, somebody goes on IR or something like that. So uh, in the midst of all that, I just only can just focus on what I can do every single week to try to up my play and help this team out as much as I can uh, at every level of the defense. So. So uh, that's all I worry about. Obviously, it'd be great to have all those guys back. I mean, we've had you know a lot of our starters go out on the IR and, and get injured, but uh, it'd be great to have all those guys back. But not something I can really focus on because if, if I get too excited and they practice all week and then they don't get activated, then I don't want to be riding that wave of you know emotions and things like that. You know, get to get to meet him, get to know him at all over, over the years. And... Of course, I've met him. I went up there every time I went. It was a good connection. You know. Um, Sad to see, uh, see. I mean, not just Mississippi State. You know, apparently, you know, he was a well-respected coach around this um, this world. And you know, he impacted a lot of lives. You know, um, I said a lot of different stories on him. Um, but you know, it, it sucks to see that. You know, not just for football, but like I said, the people he impacted, and um, especially the family. So, um, you know, I'm praying for his family and you know, the entire Mississippi State family. So. Oh, he was a good guy. Like I said, he he told me like three different stories in like 30 seconds. But um, no, nah, that's something you know. Like I said, he impacted so many people um, just by you know some of the stories he didn't told him. So um, like I said, the interact um, interaction we had, you know, it was, out, it was good. Um, every time I go back, I felt at home, even with him and his um, new staff. So like I said, um, I hate it happen, um, especially for um, his family um, and like I said, the whole Mississippi State um, family. On the game, when you look at the film from these last three games where you guys haven't been affecting the quarterback as much, was there any commonality, anything that was just that you say, hey, this has got to get better? Well, I mean, I go back to the last game. You know, the, the couple of times we did uh, have a chance to affect them. Um, you know, the couple of times he was scrambling around, made a throw on the sideline. Um, but, I mean, we went back and watched film, I mean, I think when we talk about affecting the quarterback, it's, it's more ways to affect the quarterback um, than sacks. You know, quarterback getting the ball off in two seconds, I mean, we can't get sacked. We can't get in the backfield because, I mean, you go walk back and watch that game against the um, Jags, I mean, we we got we had some good rushes. Quarterback get up grid of the ball. So, um, win now, I think that's our next step in our game. And, you know, get back to what we were doing early in the season, you know, even with um, Tar, you know, he had he was leading the team in batted ball and pass deflection. So, you know, that's then when I say it's more way to affect the quarterback. You know, uh, up front we could do a better job of getting our hands up if quarterback want to get the ball off fast. Or, um, like I said, um, just give him a different looks. Um, you know, you know us him in or whatever it may be, um, just to kind of mess mess up with the um, communication with the offense line. So, but like I said, this week here it's a new week. Um, I take full responsibility and. Um, the way we play up front. I'm, I'm the leader in that room, and um, this week is a big challenge for us. They throw the ball a lot, and um, 
this a, this a week we should get we needed to get, um, and we should get back on track. So I'm excited for this uh, matchup. Um, I got a lot of trust in all guys that we will get back on track, not just up front, but as a whole defense. And because uh, you know affecting the quarterback, all the eleven on the field have to be on the same page. So um, you know I, we got to get out there. We got to do our job up front, and they got to do our, do their job on the back end. They manipulate the pocket, and this is a team that's really heavy on passing because he's there high caliber player at the quarterback position, so they got to utilize them. So that'll be their goal is to get the ball out and throw it around to those uh, outside weapons. For you guys, just maybe if, even if you can't get to him, just getting your hands up. I think he's like one of those guys that for some reason, even how big he is, he's getting passes knocked down. You had a couple TV uh, pass breakups in that last game, but you guys had to turn those into turnovers, right? Yeah, I think, uh, like you mentioned, even though he's a taller guy, I think it's just uh, how much they throw the ball around. Uh, that's just going to eventually start happening. Um, some of those shorter passes, guys will get their hands up when they can't get there. But, um, you know, this week the goal is to get there. I'm not, if I can't get there, I'll get my hands up. But the goal is to get there as many times as I can this week. And that's what uh, myself and the whole front is focused on in the defense. And that's uh, what we'll make happen. For you, you started the season off, you know, with I think like six sacks. What, what for you has not been there? And, and what do you do to get back to that production? Um, you know, I just try to follow along with the game plans and what's coached of us. Um, and different games require different things uh, out of the front. You know, it's a team game. you got to be selfless and, and do that. And um, I think for me, it'll be what I uh, just working on what I can do within that, that system or game plan for the game because it changes each week. So you just got to look at the film and figure out, even if not in the best situations sometimes with a game plan or even in the best situations, how you can take advantage of all reps and opportunities to rush the passer because they're not always there. So I think it'll just be at the end of the year, you look at different games um, and how they went and what the game plan was, and then you focus on what you could have did better for that specific game plan. You mentioned being selfless. Rebull kind of mentioned his message this week, individual players doing something to lift the spirits of the team. What did you take away? Is there anything you're doing to kind of lift the spirits of everyone around you or yourself? Um, I mean, first, obviously, the thing that's going to lift the most spirits is winning. But uh, for me, it's uh, I think the message I got from just all our meetings was, you know, kind of take care of your own your own house or your own self, and it'll ride, uh, raise everybody else around you, and they'll be able to play better and stuff like that. So I think it just starts with your yourself uh, and being your toughest critic and worrying about what you can do better without, like, uh, you know, maybe trying to make plays without jeopardizing the defense or getting out of position. And it's just all those things at once. And then if everybody does that, it becomes a group effort of all living on the same page, you know.